Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video, we're going to cover the binomial distribution. And in this problem, we're going to deal with a few cases as well as explore other possibilities for other things that may help you in the future. So in this problem, we have a history lecture on our class has 15 students, and there is a 15% absentee rate per class meeting. And we have two questions here. So like in the first set, we have uh, find the probability that one student will be absent from class. And problem B here, we have find the probability that at least two students will be absent from class. Now, because this is binomial distribution, there are a couple of things we need to identify with first, right? Um, N is the number of trials. Uh, X is the number of successful trials. And we have P, the probability of success, and Q, the probability of failure. These are the four components and four requirements that are necessary to conduct the binomial experiment. And in this case, we have our N, right? Our n is our number of students, which is 15. So we're going to go ahead and notarize that right here. And let me just put that here in blue. So we have n equals 15. These are the 15 students. And our p, our probability of an absentee being uh, missing a class meeting, because we have our probabilities are based on absence from class. Our probability of being absent is 15%, which translates into a decimal. To translate this, we divide the percentage by 100, and we get 0 0.15. And since we have P, we know our probability for failure is the complement of P. So what we do is we take, to make Q, we take 1 and subtract P, which in this case becomes 1 minus 0 0.15, which is 0 0.85. And now, Based on this, we have the three components we need, and our last component comes from each question. In the first question here we have for part A, it says find the probability that one student will be absent from class. So here we're looking for the probability that x is equivalent to 1. Now the binomial distribution, the binomial distribution function is a function that works with all four components. So we have our p, probability of the value of x is equivalent to the combination of n and x, where n is the number of uh, selections and x is the number of successful selections. We're multiplying that times the probability of success to the power of x times the probability of q to the power of n minus x as an exponent, where n is the number of trials and x is the number of successful trials. Now, in this case, we have x being 1, we still have n is 15, we still have p as 0 0.15, and q as 0 0.85. So let's put together the question. And here we have 15 combination 1 times, I'm going to use parentheses to show multiplication, and we have here then the probability of success is 0 0.15, and our exponent for this is going to be the power of x, so x is also 1, put a 1 up here. We're multiplying that times the probability of failure to the power of n minus x. Now, n is 15, and x is 1, and 15 take away 1 gives us 14. And now the next step is we want to run all of this on our calculators, right? So I'm going to run, for the most part, these and simplify them as much as we can. Anything to the power of n is whatever's inside, and this 15 combination 1 gives us just 15. You can run this on your calculator by putting 15C1 on your calculator using the, com the combination formula for calculators. And here we have 15, 0 0.15, and finally 0 0.85 to the power of 14. And this is a little bit harder to simplify, so I'm going to just leave it right there for now. Now to compute this, when you compute this with your calculator, you're going to get a long decimal number. And what you want to do is take this answer to at least four decimal places. And maybe add the next decimal place for the case of rounding. And I'll show you guys how that looks. So we're going to get 0 0.23123. And this continues, but we don't need any other positions. What's important here is that we have the fifth one to round the fourth decimal position. And so the solution to the probability that one student will be absent from class is 0 0.2312. And that covers the first part of this problem. Now, for the second component, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how this should actually be worked out, because 
what's necessary in the work and what you're actually going to do are two separate things because one way is doing a lot of work and one way is doing easy work. And I just want to remind you guys of a couple of things, right? For the first, for the first part that's most important is we know that any time we have a set of probabilities that the sum of those probabilities are always equivalent to just one. And in this case, the sum of the probabilities are actually from x being its lowest value of 0 to the highest value. So these probabilities for part b here, we're going to know that the probability of 0 plus the probability of 1 plus the probability of 2 plus the probability of 3 plus the probability of 4 plus 5 all the way to 15. Plus 9, this is a long list, plus 10, plus 11, plus 12, plus 13, plus 14, plus 15, will all be equivalent to 1. And that's because the sum of every probability should always add up to 1. And we know this from discrete probabilities, right? And binomial probability distributions, they run on the same condition as discrete probabilities do, because these run with discrete numbers, if you notice. And for that reason, they share the same idea. And now for problem two, what we wanted to do here is find the probability that at least two students will be absent from class. And if we know anything of the term at least two students, right, we know that this becomes at least two, right? And we know the term for this is referencing that x is greater or equal to 2. And so if we put here the probability that x is greater or equal to 2, it means we have to find the probability of each of these. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, and add them just to get the, prob the solution to this problem. However, if we know that we need all of these to solve the probability of this problem, it may be easier to take the probability of 0 and the probability of 1 and subtract it to 1, which is equivalent to the same thing. And so to get this probability, we know this is going to be equivalent to the probability of 1 minus the probability of 0 plus the probability of 1. Because if we subtract the probability of 0 and 1 from both sides here, this side over here becomes 1 minus the probability of 0 minus the probability of 1 equal to the rest of this. And they become equivalent because all the sums of the probabilities are always equivalent to 1. And so to do this problem, we can make our life a lot easier than finding every single one of these. In fact, it's so much easier because we've already found the probability of 1. So technically, we just have to find the probability of 0, add it to the 1, and subtract it from the pro of just 1. So here, let's find the probability when x is 0, right? The probability of x being 0 gives us 15 combination 0 times the probability of success is 0 0.15 to the power of x, which in this case, x is 0, so we put the 0 up here as the exponent. We're multiplying that by 0 0.85 to the power of 15, take away 0, which is just 15. And now, using a calculator, we can calculate this result, right? And when we calculate this result, we know this goes to 1. This also goes to 1. So what we're looking at here is just 1 times 1 times 0 0.85 to the power of 15. And when we run this on our calculator, we're going to get a long decimal number, right? But we just, again, we need five decimal positions. So this is going to be 0 0.087. Three, five, and this will continue. And we don't need this long decimal number. We just need four decimal positions. So we're going to round this number up. And we're going to get 0 0.0874. And like I mentioned before, we already have the probability of 1. So if we want to find the probability of at least 2, we need to take the probability of 0 and the probability of 1 and subtract it from 100%. So here are the probability of at least 2. becomes 1 take away the probability of 0 minus the probability of 1. And we have 1 take away 0 
minus the second one, 0 0.2312. And when we subtract these with our calculator, right, we're going to just combine the two negatives really quickly. This should make it easier to understand. We have one takeaway. What's this going to give us? That's going to be 0 0.3186. And when we subtract th this one minus 0 0.3186, we're going to get 0 0.6814. Now this covers the case for at least two, but let's say by any chance you had a different kind of problem here. And I'll add this as like a bonus to this video, right? Like let's say in some weird way, your case for the problem you're given says at most two, or maybe it says at most, at most one, or at most two. Um, let's do the opposite then, right? So we'll take at most one, which will be the complement to this. And it'll be worth investigating more because we just have to find the probability of at most one, right? So the probability of at most one, so let's put this as the bonus problem. So at most one again. The way at most one works is you can't have more than one student be an absent. So which probabilities does it pertain to? Instead of the at least, which requires the number and everything above, at most requires the number inclusive and everything below. So here we have the probabilities of x being less than or equal to 1. And this involves only 1 and 0. In this case, it would be more effective to just do these two combine them, and be done, because there's only two probabilities to do. And lucky for us, we have both of these probabilities on the board already, right? Because the probability of 0 is 0 0.0874. And the probability of 1, which I still have right here conveniently, is 0 0.2312. And now when adding these two, 4 and 2 make 6, 1 and 7 make 8, 3 and 8 make 11, that makes a 3. So the probability of having at least one, at most, one student that would be absent would be 31.86% when converting this to a percentage, right? Thank you. That concludes the video.